What is up guys, Crandar here, and this is part 17 of my Alan Wake playthrough with commentary. Last, where we left off, I finished episode 3, and now we're going to jump right in, into episode 4. Previously on Alan Wake, I'm hunted by the law. Sheriff, Wake's running, I'm giving chase. Are you seriously telling me that writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is. Her purported kidnapper was eaten up by the dark presence before it attacked me. Alan, shh, baby. It was just a nightmare. Alice. There you go, Alan. Hartman, I fell. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. I... You went through another rough period. What? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're... you lie. You're suffering from various uh... symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Bastard. It's okay, okay Alan. Just, Just let, let go. go. go, 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 go. <sighs> mm. I felt groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. What is going on, guys? Alice is there now. There are only empty dead. sheets of paper here. No manuscript pages. Alice apparently dead. Alan's apparently schizophrenic. What is going on? The door was locked. I was a prisoner here. Good evening, Alan. Are we feeling better now? Feeling calm? Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message. Loud and clear. Why, right. That's the spirit? You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. Now, why don't you come with me? We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. This corridor is for patients. Most of them are here right now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip, except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. This way, Alan. Into the elevator. Now, Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned. And you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. You go this way, Alan. I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying. But under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. 
Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. This is starting to get interesting, guys. <laughs> Things I don't want to talk because I don't know when when another speaking part's going to start, and I don't want to be speaking whilst you know you guys are while the plot's unfolding. <sighs> I never get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. Alan, what I'm telling you is good news. Right now we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. After all, Hartman I'm the one trying to bring you voice. out of the world His words you've constructed madly inside my head. But I can't I dug do my nails it by into myself. the palms of my hands to stay You focused. need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. Come along. Let's go inside. Come on. Come on. Here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I do love to hunt. The great outdoors, man versus nature. It's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. Scary, scary, scary. Crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> Emerson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real bad dream, mister. You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Boo. That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He works on video Elbow games. Strike. Ooh, it's yeah. trash, of yeah. course, but yeah. it does involve I'll some small creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. I have a feeling this must be a cameo appearance from one of the developers, I don't know why. <laughs> Come, Alan. This way. Now. You might have noticed the typewriter in your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. My rheumatism's killing me. There's a storm coming. Oh, what a storm. I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. And these two are the Anderson brothers, Odin and Tor. They had a... how should I put this? A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. They even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They're well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. No, that won't do. I'm so sorry to cut this short.
for now, Alan. The power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Don't you think? Why does everyone want to get me to write the story? What's going on? I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. Oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah! Being ah. crazy is a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Zane! You're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson Farm. Valhalla! We wrote it all down, lest we to forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. Oh, I don't know where well, that's been. I don't want to know where that's been. Alright, let's listen to what this has to say. Zane could feel the poems, taking form, shaping things. As he experimented, he imagined he could almost feel the power surging through the keys of the typewriter. It exhilarated him. But there was fear, too. If not for his young assistant, Emil, he would have given it up. But Emil convinced him otherwise. He, too, had a way with words. My head was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me, about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Right, let's go back to the room then. I'm a bad dream, and you can't wake up. You can't hurt a nightmare because all dreams are only imagination. They're only in your head, and they're not there when you wake up. So you can't wake up because I'm in charge now, and I don't want to disappear. My nightmare is the publisher people who want to make a contribution so they can say they made a contribution. And then we end up with mullets in there because they think mullets are funny, but it wasn't supposed to be about mullets. And now it's about mullets. And when it's in slow motion, they call it mullet time because the numbers came back from marketing that mullet time is the hook we needed to go big in the target demographic. And they're not even kidding. They say it all like serial killers with straight faces and smiles. My nightmare is the writers who want to make everything from the characters to the toasters talk, talk, talk all the time and express their feelings so they won't shut up. And the writers won't shut up either because they have feelings too. And I have to listen to them because they're not scared of me. And everyone should just shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Hey, wake. Why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, Wake. This is starting to get a bit suspicious. Everyone from the orderlies to the doctors to the kidnappers all want me to write this story. Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants. And the story will come true. Hmm. <laughs> Night Springs for the Xbox. Okay.
Hartman wanted me to write. I knew I couldn't, but I figured I should just play along for now. It was the only thing I could do with Nurse Birch watching me like a hawk. The white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Hey, wake! You stay here. I'm gonna go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? Be cool. I didn't know what the chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Where the hell did get a damn I don't know. Here's a friendly talk from the old little witch. Oh, afraid of the crazy brothers, are ya? Not so weak now. Hartman kept talking, giving Barry the grand tour, clearly proud of the place. He went on and on about his hunting trophies, and Barry was impressed. But he was here on business. He raised his voice, cut through the monologue. Hey, Hartman, where's Al? Hartman stopped in mid-sentence, annoyed at the interruption. He nodded at the hulking orderly standing nearby. The man smiled and clapped a practice hand on Barry's shoulder. What are we? Well, things are unraveling fast. Sinclair looked they? bad. That wasn't a love tap. The crazy old fart hit her hard. And if she was one of Hartman's goons, the backstage she had to is come all in. yours. I could Tom, get the key. Seize your destiny. destiny. I had to get to Hartman's office. He had taken all my manuscript pages. That's where I'd be keeping them. Come out and face the music, Birch. It's time to pay the piper. Maybe you could come out and beat our wrinkled adult. Right, let's see. Let's see now. The photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing outside the lodge. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. Hartman had been playing me all along. There we go. The markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made of the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't read right. Right, we're gonna read the manuscript page and then we're gonna listen to the tapes. So, one at a time. Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time. And he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. All right, that's who Mott was—the kidnapper. I, I, I just hadn't realized. All right, let's listen to the tape. Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? <sighs> he's more and more out of control all the time. The parties—he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent. He's. Do you mean with you? No, not with me. No, never. I. Sometimes I almost wish Alan would take a swing at me, because at least that'd lead to a conversation he couldn't just march out of. But no. He just... Alan doesn't really sleep. And the work, well, he's not writing. At all. He sits there for hours and just gets more and more frustrated. And I can't talk to him. Yes. Tell me, Mrs. Wake. What would you say to him if he'd listen? <sighs> I want to say, I look at you, and it's not you, just some stranger who resembles you, looking out from behind your eyes, and I don't like that guy much, and now it's all gonna go to hell. But you don't ever say this. No, no, I've tried, but he's not listening, he's too deep in his own problems, always going on about something else, I'm so afraid I'm gonna lose him. He doesn't let me in anymore. He just keeps me in the dark. I'm so alone here, even when he's home. Please help me, Doctor, because I am at my wit's end. Well, if you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but Doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. 
cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut-up of this. Just a recording. Is that the only recording, or is it... Let's see, is, is it going to be the same thing? Rudolph Lane's case is interesting. Oh, no. He was completely blocked, and frankly, I was about to discard him as useless. However, once Wake arrived and started writing, something changed in Rudolph. He's producing extraordinary work, increasingly dark pieces. Unfortunately, he doesn't respond to direction at all, and it's my belief that he's not so much a creator as an... Illustrator, perhaps. A recorder of sorts. I hadn't considered the existence of such a role before, let alone its implications, but the paintings he has produced are informative. At least he's easily controlled and useful. I wish I could say the same about Wake. It's frustrating that the best subjects are always so damn difficult to deal with. I was tailing Wheeler, and this is the only place he could have gone. That means Wake is probably there, too! Agent Nightingale, this is private property, and I will not allow you to disturb my patients. Yeah? I can get a warrant. How are your fragile little patients like that? <laughs> oh, I'm thoroughly intimidated by your mighty authority now, Agent. Listen, you smug snob. How would you like it if I busted through this gate and knocked you around a little? Agent Nightingale, first of all, I'm recording this conversation, so you might want to watch what you say. Secondly, you're not dealing with a hick now. I know the law, and if you can get a judge to grant a warrant, I'll be glad to cooperate. But you won't get one. Be advised that any further communications with me are to be made through my lawyer. I don't believe this. Good day, Agent. Yeah. <laughs> Agent Nightingale such a douche. <laughs> Right, let's get let, out of here. let's get to Hartman's office. Hartman, do you hear me? I'm gonna sue your crazy quack ass to split. Hi, Barry. Barry? Ow! About time. Barry, man, am I glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You okay? Yeah. I mean, no. The cops found me at Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such. Or else I'd sue their asses. Speaking of asses, that fed gave me a real hard time. But I had no clue where you were. That guy's crazy, Al. But he let me go, and then I get a call from Hartman, that son of a bitch, who tells me you're here, and I should come pick you up. But when I got here, two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there. What's... what's with the cutout? I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose after what she did to us. That'll teach her. Yeah, <laughs> that's a harsh punishment. Come on, pal, we gotta get going. <laughs> Barry. Let's go. Let me pass. There we go. Get the coffee thermos. Let's unlock this door. These were all the pages I had on me. And more. Alan, please. You're sliding back into the... Tell me one more lie and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea... Hartman, shut up! Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just... Go! Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful. With your ability and mine. Yes, finally he got him. He got some. <laughs> Look at that grin. <laughs> I had to find a way out. 
Alright guys, with that, that's gonna do it now for part 17. We've already run... This is, this is shaping up to be quite a lengthy video, so uh, like, comment, and subscribe, all that great and wonderful stuff. Follow me on Twitter, link to that will be in the description. And as always guys, I will catch all of you in the next part.